Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming with a quick view of Mass Effect Andromeda. Jumping into a multiplayer bronze match. The game just came out uh, for those of us that have Origin Access. Then I'm playing it. I got my free packs. The DLC, the pre-order DLC is available so you get the pack. And this is Mass Effect Andromeda. It looks nice and runs fairly well, at least on my computer. GTX 980 uh, i7 3770K not overclocked cover is automatic though I'm not sure if you could uh, uh, if you can uh, make it so that it isn't not automatic I've got a high rate of fire. Whoa. There we go. So the way it works is if you go in the air and then aim down sights, you actually will stay in the air for a while. As long as your fuel allows it to. I should point should point out that the multiplayer servers are not running well at the moment, and that's expected because the game Uh, the game just came out, so they're stressed to all hell and back. And that... Is that. You do have... Uh, my expectation when it came to Mass Effect Andromeda is that it would have... It would essentially be Mass Effect free multiplayer, but with more flexibility more and more mobility. And that's pretty much what it is. I like this sniper rifle, by the way. Where the hell are they? Right there. Mass play. I'm playing a Turing Havoc right here. Let's see how far I can get. I'm not really interested in necessarily completing it. Uh, completing this. Now I should point out that although you have, you've got great mobility, that doesn't mean that you're actually very uh, durable or not. You can die very quickly, even on this difficulty. Now one of the things I'm actually curious about here is sustained power controls, uh, hold, the aiming controls. So there is no actual cover control. The cover is designed to be done like this in all situations. So it's uh, designed to uh, wonder if you can get better scopes, I mean longer range scopes. Where are they? Assault rifle. Okay, it's all clear. Now, what I need is some ammo. Not that many rounds with the sniper rifle. Need to eliminate those targets. Okay, I'm not. I'll come to you. Stuck. Good thing. Not sure if uh, some classes have. Well, probably, very likely, because they did have in Mass Effect from Oakland. I'm talking about mobility here. I need to. Then kill the actual target. That kill the target. The way it works is that if you don't complete the objective, you'll 
keep getting swarmed by enemies and they'll eventually fucking kill me. Get down! There is... The Sentinel has uh, the ability when it comes to cover to actually set up uh, an artificial cover. I, I admit that I'm disappointed by something here. Uh, as far as I see it. There is a missed opportunity when it comes to what Bioware did with this game in terms of destructible terrain. Because we know the Frostbite engine has the ability of destructible terrain, but they decided not to actually make use of that. So I view that as a really lost chance they could have taken care of. I mean, yeah, it's nice, you know, the game looks nice, the environments are great, but the fact that it's a static environment that doesn't change is kind of dull. I mean, yeah. It's Mass Effect free multiplayer gameplay with more flexibility and mobility as expected it would be. That's yeah, fine. If that's your cup of tea and it is my cup of tea, then you'll be satisfied. But if you want more than that, well, you're probably gonna be disappointed. Oop. I'm hovering, no actual control over the direction of which I'm going. And the multiplayer server is lagging as usual. I mean, I do have plenty of ammo, that's not the problem. Your elf does not regenerate. You do have medkits. Tip, by the way, use the map. At the top to understand where the enemy is. Because that is particularly helpful. Probably gonna take about 20 minutes, that's how long a multiplayer round takes in Mass Effect 3. And it really is the same kind of thing you'd expect. Waves of enemies, the same objectives. I mean, that's fine. They generated them a lot of money. With, uh, these guys seem really a, the Reapers. <laughs> with the obligatory Banshee. I mean, they, they've got more range capability than the Reapers did in Mass Effect. You can... Um, was unfortunate and what are we all dead yep we are all dead I could use hmm. I don't know Th there's too many I mean if 
you know, there weren't so many and mm, there was someone alive. Yeah, probably just try to keep people alive. That's multiplayer. Then I sort of play that to win. And right now people are still adjusting to it. There is a tutorial. Probably should play that. You know, to get my bearings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I will. Just not right here. So that's how the game runs. That's how the game looks. And that's how multiplayer is. Same thing as before. Just more flexibility, more... Uh, more mobility, more options, that kind of stuff. Now, options-wise, you've got the field of view. So, you've got aim assist, subtitles, field of view here, tutorials, okay. You've got controls, keybinds, and uh, controller. So, if you want to play controller, by all means, you've got several options there. Uh, mouse sensitivity, aiming controls, vibration, which I'm actually going to disable. Based on them, I'm not fan about that. Uh, audio options, maxed everything out. Nothing really spectacular there. Now, here's my issue. So you've got all these options, and some of them do have descriptions, a lot of them don't have descriptions. So film grain chromatic operation do have uh, descriptions, but everything else, all, all the stuff, temporal aliasing, all that kind of stuff, resolution scale, it's like, <laughs> yeah, LOD. Like, it's missing a lot of stuff. Now, they did say they were going to have a day one patch, but I'm not sure if they applied that day one patch to the game. And that, that's kind of my issue here. Is the day one patch applied to the game already? If it's not, well, I guess there's some hope things will improve, descriptions. I would like them to add options to disable depth of field and motion blur. Now, you can uh, disable depth of field or render uh, uh, motion blur enable uh, zero. So... Uh, uh, motion uh, blur enable uh, zero, right? And that should work. Like, let, you, let me just uh, load the save here. This is very early on. I just started the game to see how it would look and all that. It seems to run is worse, at least in portions of the single player, than it does in the multiplayer. Like, in the multiplayer, I get 60 FPS, no problems. I've tested it on several maps against several enemies. That's no problem. In single player, it's weird because it drops anywhere between 40 to 50 FPS. Now, this is the latest NVIDIA drivers. Uh, so, we'll see. Maybe it's just the fact that... Um, you... You have a wider FOV and you have an adjustable FOV. So, for instance, you don't have this kind of a camera distance in it. Maybe it's just the level of details, the, the characters that are on the screen and all that kind of stuff. Uh, let me go to main menu. The UI is practically the same UI you'd expect from a Mass Effect game. It's not really PC-centric. It's never been PC-centric. Uh, the Dragon Age team has typically had better PC uh, UIs. And you know, it's weird because you do have uh, your choices in the wheel. They actually respond to keys. But whereas in Dragon Age Inquisition, they tell you what number, you know, picks what choice. They tell you that. They don't tell you that here. So there's a problem there. I mean, it, they do work. I mean, it's, I, I guess it's leftover for Dragon Age Inquisition because it's the same engine team that worked at Dragon, for Dragon Age Inquisition for the team. Uh, so there's that. Now, uh, you also have... Well, let's talk about character customization. Final thing uh, before I end this. Now, for some weird reason, the main menu is stuck at 45 FPS, which is weird because the game certainly runs much better in a... The image there doesn't make sense why that would be at 45 uh, FPS as opposed to the actual game, which runs much better than that. Uh, so, I mean, this the screen, you know, this is rendering. So, now uh, let's talk about car character customization. So you can customize your twin, twin, your father. Apparently, the game randomizes that. So you might not want to mess around too much with that because you might get some hideous father. But here's the thing. Uh, default appearance. Now, I would like to ch to take the default rider and just 
tweak some things, the beard, the hair, the eye color, just, you know, just these kind of things, because I don't like those aspects, but you can't. You either have the option of going with that, or you have to go make your own character, and your own character is gonna look hideous in comparison. I mean, I get it, the character customization options, the engine in itself is actually fairly powerful in terms of what you can do. Here, and they actually use it to make a lot of the characters in the game. Not the main characters, but secondary characters. That's fine. But here's the thing. When it comes down to it. Bioware says that they can't have the same lip sync quality as a CD project because they actually have to uh, take into account the character customization, right? I'd argue that between lip syncing and character customization, I would take lip syncing, especially because, quite frankly, uh, like in uh, uh, because, quite frankly, this is a lot of time, a lot of work. It would take a lot of time to actually make a good-looking character. And whereas in uh, and by the way, whereas in Mass Effect Two, Mass Effect Three, and Mass Effect One, I'm I don't remember that one. You had uh, the ability to. Uh, go for uh, to get the code for it, right? To import your character so that you could use the codes of other people, and other people would make some really good looking characters, good looking shepherds. That is not the case here, and the default options, quite frankly, are trash for the most part. Uh, and so, you know, I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of the de default characters, but I'm also not a fan of, you know, the thing, the options that I have to work with. Um, by the way, before I end this, because really I said what I had to say, final uh, point, and a question really, play female or male rider? That's the question. I'll go with the default name, and a point about default name is if you stick with the default name, People will actually use it, Sarah or Scott Ryder, they'll use it the conversation. That's a great touch, because I really don't like the fact characters don't use your first name. They they apparently will use it here, if you stick with that one. You've got uh, ability, you know, you've got customization options in terms of, you know, what what's your starting setup. I'll, I'll go with, bio, with uh, the Vanguard. But the question is, male or female? My personal preference is, uh, I think the... I think both voice actors are reasonable, though I think the male one fits the style of the character more. And, and the big point to me is that, as far as I'm concerned, I don't like the way the female armors look. I really don't. I mean, you're wearing this piece of spacesuit armor carrying these big guns around, and you're like, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're this... Uh, you're this thin, uh, athletic type woman. I mean, I've met me female soldiers in real life. I can tell you, they not, don't look exactly like, especially infantrymen. So, uh, but you know, I leave that choice to people. I prefer to go go male. Obviously, ultimately, I'll, I'll go with my preference. But I, I want to hear what people have to say on this before I actually start my playthrough. Costine here on Serious Gaming signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.